Hello, hello, hello. So last week, Prusa flew me and a bunch of other content creators out to Prague for a product unveiling. I have never been invited to a formal product launch before. It took place in a planetarium. It was really cool. I could probably talk about it for a while, but that's not what you're here for. And we're gonna dive right into the meat and potatoes of this video right now. Prusa has announced a bunch of cool new stuff coming out, and we're gonna start off with the Prusa Core 1L. It's the Prusa Core 1, but bigger and betterer. So let's start off with the specs. The Core 1L is bigger. How bigger? It has a print volume of 300 by 300 by 330 millimeters. So compared to the Prusa Core 1, which is 250 by 220 by 270, it is bigger. How much bigger? It's actually, when you consider in terms of actual usable print volume, it's nearly double, uh, which is surprising when you consider the fact this printer is only 10% bigger. And another surprising fact, it's actually lighter than the standard Core 1. They did that by replacing some of the panels on the printer itself, which used to be steel before, with stamped aluminum panels now. So you're still getting the same structural steel frame as the Core 1, but now some of the panels have been replaced with lighter aluminum. So you get a bigger printer, that's not really that much bigger and it's lighter. Now, speaking of aluminum, what you'll probably notice is the bed itself. Gone is the PCB bed shared between the Core 1 and the Prusa Mark IV. We now have a cast aluminum bed. And also this bed is mains powered. So it's powered by AC now, no more DC, which means it's gonna be able to heat up quicker. And it's also gonna be able to put a lot more heat into the system. And Prusa is gonna take advantage of that with the Core 1L. If you're familiar with Voron or the Nevermore system, you know how we use fans to circulate the excess heat from the bed to heat up our chambers. Well, guess what? Prusa is now doing that too. So underneath your bed, you'll see two fans. This is gonna take cold air from the lower end of the printer chamber, suck it up, pass it over the bed itself, heat it up, and basically turn your printer enclosure into something akin to a convection oven. So you're gonna get more even heat throughout the chamber, and it should be able to hold a consistent chamber temperature of 60 degrees Celsius as well. So with the new cast aluminum bed in the AC heater, you should be seeing a more consistent even heating of the bed surface itself. Now, when it comes to large prints, having an evenly consistent surface is gonna help a lot with fighting warp but what can still happen is on those larger prints it can actually pull your PEI flex plate up off of the bed itself well what Prusa has done is they've gone ahead and installed extra magnets in the corners of their bed to help prevent that lifting these magnets are installed in the bed itself in machined pockets and they are very strong so now let's move up from the bed the XY gantry itself is pretty dang similar to the standard core one. It's the same belt pathing, the same motors, pretty much the same neck extruder. Although on top of it, you are gonna notice one small little change. There's now a 3D printed thing on top of the tool head. Well, guess what? That is for automatically opening and closing the vent on the top of your printer. And so you don't have to worry about any additional hardware like a servo or electronics, which could potentially fail. This is simply just the tool head itself opening and closing at the start of your print. And this is just controlled from some additional G code. And this is something I would really like to see back ported onto the Prusa Core 1. Oh yeah, and the, uh, the top panel is now easily removable too. And again, as this is the same XY motion system as the Core 1 just scaled up, you're gonna get all those Prusa features that are tried and true, input shaping, phase stepping. The print quality should be relatively similar to the Core 1. Again, it's the same type of printer, just bigger. You do get included with your purchase two nozzles, a high flow nozzle for printing PLA, PETG, ABS, etc. But they also will include a hardened nozzle as well for printing those carbon fiber or glass filled materials. And the setup couldn't be any simpler. When you purchase a pre-assembled Core 1L, it comes from the factory pre-calibrated. So all you need to do is take it out of the box, plug it in, turn it on, feed it some filament and start printing. And yes, it does come with a camera, a 1080p camera. Yay. 
Now, there are some other slight tweaks to the design compared to the Core 1. On the back, you're going to see a little bit different electronics layout. Since this is a mains bed, there's now a solid state relay for controlling that. I do believe the stock power supply is also a little bit smaller now because, again, it doesn't need to power a bed. And there are a few other tweaks to the printer itself, different spool handles, uh, the door handle is now screwed onto the front panel instead of just VHB'd on. So there are some tweaks and adjustments from the Core 1 to the Core 1L. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you like the Core 1 and you want a bigger Core 1, well, now you can get the bigger Core 1. It's the Core 1L. So now let's move on to the Prusa XL, Prusa's tool changing 3D printer. And with it being a tool changer, it allows you to do some things you can't do on a single nozzle, a single tool head printer. For example, as they shown off here, swapping over to a silicone tool head. That's right, Prusa was demoing a tool head replacement for the XL that is able to print silicone, flexible silicone. And it does it through a pretty ingenious way. It sort of replaces the stock extruder with a setup that pulls from what looks like two spools of filament. Those aren't actually spools of filament. They are essentially hollow tubes used to carry uh, each part of the two part silicone. So it carries part A and part B to the tool head uh, using the extruder gear to pull it along. It is sliced open in the tool head and the, again, each part of the silicone is poured out into the mixing nozzle where it is mixed and then extruded or laid down. Uh, what, what's the proper term for that? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, but either way, you're essentially pulling now a two-part solution. It is mixing in the tool head at the nozzle. These nozzles are easily replaceable. And as far as I understand, they are a nominal commercial off-the-shelf item. Uh, so sourcing them will be pretty easy. And then the empty casings are then fed back into a disposal bin on the side of the printer. So this allows you to print with a two-part silicone and it works pretty good as they were showing off in the demo here. Now, also this does open a bit of an opportunity because theoretically you can fill those filament looking casings with pretty much any sort of two-part solution. So potentially in the future, we might be able to see two-part epoxies or other things. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it pretty much opens quite a uh, opportunity for experimenting. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out in the future. But let's go back to normal tried and true filament that our printers eat. And one of the things that Prusa was showing off here was their open print tag system for filament tracking and management. So as of right now, RFID in 3D printing, it, it's kind of one of those things that some companies have tried it out over the years, but it's never really caught on. And one of the big problems with RFID filament tracking systems is a lot of time they're proprietary and they're pretty locked down. Prusa is trying to change that. They're trying to implement a system of open source, essentially RFID tracking for your filament. It will not require the cloud if you just want to track everything on your personal phone or printer and be able to read spools and modify the data on the tracking RFID tag on the spool itself. You can do that fully offline if you want. Although of course, cloud features will be available for those that wish to use them. The tags themselves are rewritable. So after you finish a spool, you'll be able to take that tag and reuse it on another spool and they are user writable as well. So you can also customize the information on the spools themselves. Now, as of right now, they didn't really have much to show off other than the tags themselves and also the new spools for Prusamit, which are a little bit narrower than the older spool design. So that should help a bit with uh, compatibility with certain AMS multi-material systems on the market. And uh, it, it'll be interesting. This is one of those things where they're kind of laying the groundwork right now, and it's gonna be up to the community and especially filament manufacturers other than Prusa to start adopting this system for it to truly succeed down the line. But this is one of those things that if it does pan out, this will benefit end users quite a bit. So hopefully this catches on. And last but not least, let's end on some bling. This is the Prusa Signature Oak. It's, it's basically a core one in a wooden box. Last year, Prusa showed off a 
core one with a uh, bamboo paneled enclosure. And it was a cool little thing they showed off, but they wanted to make it something that they could actually manufacture. And it turns out uh, bamboo has some issues with humidity and whatnot. So they ended up going down a route where they reached out and they worked together with a local Czech woodworking shop to create these custom enclosures for Prusa Core Ones. These are made out of a hundred year old oak. They are completely custom. Like every one of these is gonna be one of a kind. And these are definitely a showpiece printer. This, this is an art piece. This is, you're not going to be buying this printer to put it in your print farm or print benches a couple times a month. This, this is definitely something that will sit in an office or somewhere else to show off its artness. This will be a limited production item. They're only producing 250 of these. Each one comes serialized with a personalized plate and plaque on it. And uh, if you're wondering about the price, it is called to inquire, and that should tell you all you need to know. So again, I want to give a huge shout out to Prusa for Fly Me and others out for this event. Uh, I do believe they're going to be releasing more information about all this stuff on their own sites and their own videos. So I'll have some links below if you want to read into more of this stuff as well. Obviously, this was a early showing of these products. Uh, some of them will be available relatively soon, even immediately, maybe. And some will be coming out in the future as well. Some of these are pre-production as well. So critique them accordingly. Uh, but I am excited. It is really cool to see new stuff coming out in 3D printing. And especially last year with the Core 1 launch, and now that I have two of them, I've been using them a lot. It's gonna be really exciting to put the Core 1 L through its paces when I can get my hands on one of those. And I'm hoping it follows up on the success of the Core 1 and it's just that bigger printer for those that are looking for a bigger printer option on the market. So again, I'm Taylor Canuck Creator. Huge shout out to Prusa for inviting me out for a first look at this event. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on cool content like this in the future. Cheers.